Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Melissa from A Light Refurbish. And today's Anthony. furniture transformation gave me a little bit of nostalgia. When I arrived to pick up the buffet, the person who posted it for sale told me that the buffet belonged to her dad, who had recently passed away. His name was Leroy. Now with him gone, it was just too much for his daughter to take on the project and decided to put it up for sale. The buffet lived in his garage for 15 years. Had no hinges no knobs, and he needed some work. But somehow Leroy started sanding the piece. You can tell that he had fixed part of it. I felt like it was a blessing from a stranger to receive this piece that had been started. Responsibility to carry on with what Leroy started. Even though he wasn't here, somehow I felt blessed by him. Don't go anywhere and stick around for today's transformation. As you can imagine, after 15 years, this thing had collected a good amount of dust and spider webs. I spent two solid hours making sure it was clean before I started sanding it. The wood inside the drawers looked tired and it had a couple of stains, so I made sure I sanded the inside of them using 120 grit. I removed a couple of pieces of trim that were attached behind the fronts of each drawer. I'm pretty sure those help keep in place a couple of small storage trays that were there once. I did that so the sander could have a better access. I'm not sure why I thought that this buffet wasn't gonna need much sanding, but the more I sand it, the more I realized, oh no, this is pretty much like sanding every other piece that you wanna sand down to bare wood. The part I'm the most grateful to Leroy for was the sanding he started on the legs. He saved me a lot of time. I just needed to go over them with 120 grit. I spent a little more time sanding behind the legs and the base. I'm sure it was hard for Leroy to get access to those. The bottoms of the compartments behind the doors needed to be glued. I squeeze a good amount of glue, clamp the boards, and place a couple of heavy items on top, cleaning the extra glue with a damp paper towel. Another issue was the exposed nails from the repairs Leroy made. I wanted to give this piece a natural looking finish and I felt the nails would be distracting, which meant that I needed to cover them. I found this wood applique in my stash of scrap wood. If I could cut out the flowers and use them to cover the nails, that would resolve the issue and add a special touch. Would I like how they look? Well, let's wait and see. The edges were looking pretty rough, so I just used my surf prep sander to give them more of a rounded edge. It's not uncommon to find a wood carving of some sort on these parts, and I like the way the flowers look, so we're gonna glue them in. By the looks of it, since I can see some nail holes there, there used to be some detail that was obviously taken off at some point. I'm using some wood filler to fill in those nail holes along with some imperfections on the trim down here and also on the side veneer. Now that the repairs dried, I'm removing the clamps and sanding the surfaces with wood filler to smooth them out. Before wiping the last of the dust off, I want to share the one thing that I'm the most worried about this makeover, and it's not what you might think. Since it came without hinges, we need to find some that are a perfect match, which 
When dealing with antiques can be challenging. After some digging, we managed to find these gorgeous pulls that I think go with the style and some hinges that we won't know if they will work until we put them on. Sometimes even if you use the original ones, once you refinish, you remove them, you try to put the door back on and sometimes it doesn't work. To report that they open and close, super nice. I'm gonna lighten the wood by doing a color wash. So stick around. For the color wash, I'm gonna be using Algonquin. You guys have seen me use this tone for the color wash a lot of times. Three parts water, one part paint ratio for the color wash. Remember that a color wash with paint is gonna give you similar results to using stain. And that's my goal for this piece. After you apply the color wash, you're gonna let the paint soak for a minute and then you wanna wipe off the excess with a wet rag following the direction of the wood grain. Being that some of the wood tones were red on this piece, as I was applying the color wash, I felt like I was going to have to add something else to the finish, but I'm just not sure yet what that is. And I feel like I have to explain myself why am I applying the color wash with the hinges on. If you know how finicky antique hinges are, for me to be able to find the perfect fit, I'm kind of amazed. Now that the doors are on, they're opening and closing, I just don't want to run the risk of those hinges all of a sudden going funky on me. So the doors are staying on, but in the future, if you ever tackle a piece that's similar and you don't want to remove the hinges, you can always come back and clean the paint residue using an alcohol wipe. And after debating for a while, I decided that I wanted to add a little bit of warmth to my finish by applying some stain over my color wash. For a warm neutral tone, I'm mixing these two colors from Barathane. So I'm recording and looking at the footage, I'm realizing that this was in the background, which means I completely forgot to apply the color wash to it. I always forget about these pieces. I mix Willow Gray and Western Oak from Barathane. I just had a certain color in mind and I guess I just added a little bit of each until the color in my mind was matching the color that my eyes were seeing. Using a staining path has definitely become my go-to way to apply stain over brush, foam brushes, sponges. I think it's so easy this way. Just make sure to remove any lint from them by wrapping them with some kind of tape and unwrapping them, of course, right before using. Since all I wanted was a very light coat of stain, I wiped it off right after applying it. I ended up using these foam brushes to get into all those folds in the legs and crevices. that after applying the stain, even if it's oil-based, some wood fibers might raise, leaving some texture. If so, sand with an extra fine grit and wipe it clean before top coating. To protect today's piece, I'm using High Performance Top Coat from General Finishes. I apply a total of three coats. a quick look at where the buffet started 
and this is today i hope that you guys like it and i hope that if leroy was here he would be pleased with what i did with this piece too i will see you next time and let me know what you guys think of today's transformation in the comments Thank you.